Memory Hardware, Group 13. What is memory? Computer memory refers to electronic components within a computer system that store and retrieve data on a temporary and permanent basis. Computer memory can be broadly classified into two categories, primary memory, also known as main memory or RAM, and secondary memory, also known as storage. Primary memory refers to the volatile memory used by the computer's processor to store data and instructions for the programs that are currently running. It is the main working memory of the computer and includes components like random access memory, RAM, and cache memory. RAM is volatile type memory, which means that the data stored on it is lost when the computer is turned off. Secondary memory, on the other hand, refers to non-volatile memory devices that store data permanently. Examples of the secondary memory devices include hard disk drives, solid-state solid drives, USB flash drives, and optical disks, such as CD-ROMs and DVDs. Unlike primary memory, data stored in the secondary memory is retained even when the computer is turned off. Both primary and secondary memory are essential components of a computer system, and their performance and capacity can significantly impact the speed and efficiency of a computer's operations. The History of RAM RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory, is a type of computer memory that stores data and instructions temporarily for the CPU to access it quickly. The history of RAM dates back to the early days of computing. In the early 1940s, the first computers used magnetic drum memory, which was a rotating cylinder coated in magnetic material. The data was stored on the drum surface, and the read-write heads accessed it as the drum rotated. This type of memory was slow and could store only a limited amount of data. In the late 1940s, a new type of memory called magnetic core memory was developed. Magnetic core memory used small, magnetized metal rings to store data. It was faster and more reliable than magnetic drum memory and it could store more data. In the 60s and 70s, se semiconductor memory technologies began to emerge. The first type of semiconductor memory was called magnetic bubble memory, which used tiny magnetic domains that could be shifted back and forth to represent binary data. In the mid to late 1970s, dynamic RAM, DRAM, was invented. DRAM stored data in capacitors, which are electronic components that store electric charge. DRAM is a volatile memory. DRAM was faster and more reliable than magnetic core memory, and it could store more data. In the 80s, static memory, SRAM, was invented. SRAM uses transistors to store data, which made it faster and more reliable than DRAM. This was the first time transistors were used in, for memory, which is a very important breakthrough. SRAM is also a volatile memory like DRAM. Since the invention of DRAM and SRAM, various types of RAM have been developed, including SDRAM, DDR RAM, and others. These newer types of RAM offer higher speeds and larger capacities, allowing computers to store data more quickly and efficiently. Today, RAM is an essential component of modern computing, and advancements in RAM technology continue to drive the development of faster and more powerful computers. The history of cache. CPU cache, also known as a processor cache, is a small amount of memory built directly into the central processing unit of a computer. The cache is designed to store frequently accessed data and instructions, allowing the processor to quickly access them instead of retrieving them from slower memories such as RAM or the hard drive. The CPU cache consists of multiple levels, typically L1, L2, and L3 which each level being larger and slower than the previous one. The L1 cache is the smallest and fastest, while the L3 cache is the largest and slowest. The CPU uses a cache hierarchy to prioritize data and instructions, with the most frequently accessed items being stored in the fastest cache level. The use of CPU cache significantly improves the performance of the computer because it reduces the time the CPU spends waiting for data to be fetched from slower memory. By keeping frequently accessed data and instructions close to the CPU, the cache reduces the number of times the CPU has to wait for data to be fetched, resulting in faster processing times. The history of processor cache can be tracked back to the 1960s when, when computer systems used magnetic core memory for storing data and instructions. At the time, the CPU had direct access to memory and there was no need for a cache. In the 1970s, the introduction of semiconductor memory, the CPU's access to memory became slower and cache memory was introduced to, the ad to address this problem. The first cache memory was a small, fast memory integrated into the CPU, which was used to store frequently used instructions and data.
The first commercial computer with the cache was the IBM 360-85, introduced in 1970, which had a small, high-speed memory integrated into the CPU. This cache was used to store frequently used instructions and data, improving the performance of the computer. In the 1980s, with the introduction of microprocessors, the use of cache memory became more widespread. The Intel 802-86, introduced in 1982, was the first microprocessor to include an on-chip cache. The cache was small and had a capacity of only 256 bytes, but it was sufficient and it improved the performance of the CPU. In the 1990s, as CPUs became faster and more powerful, cache memory became larger and more sophisticated. The Intel Pentium Pro was introduced in 1995, was the first CPU to have on-chip L2 cache. This cache was shared by all cores of the CPU and was much larger than the L1 cache. In the early 2000s, CPUs started using multiple cores, and cache memory became more, ch more complex. The Intel Core 2 Duo, introduced in 2006, was the first CPU to have an on-chip L3 cache, which was shared by all of the cores on the CPU. Today, processor cache is an essential component of modern CPUs. The cache is used to improve the performance of the CPU by storing frequently used instructions and data and reducing the number of times the CPU has to access slower memory. With each of the new, new generation of CPUs, the cache has become larger and more sophisticated, improving the performance of computers and other devices. History of storage drives. In the beginning, computers used punch cards for storage, which were slow and had limited capacity. In the 1950s, the first hard disk drive was developed by IBM. This early hard drive used magnetic disks to store data and could store up to five megabytes of data. Hard drives quickly became the primary storage medium for computers and advancements in technology led to the development of smaller and more efficient hard drives. In the 1980s, floppy disks became popular as a storage, portable storage medium. These small disks could store up to 1.4 megabytes of data and were used to transfer data between computers. In the 1990s, optical storage technologies like CD-ROMs and DVDs were developed. These disks used lasers to read and write data, which allowed for higher capacities and faster data transfers. They quickly became popular for storing software, music, and movies. In the early 2000s, solid-state drives, SSDs, began to emerge as a new storage technology. SSDs used flash memory to store data, which is faster and more reliable than traditional magnetic storage. Early SSDs were expensive and had limited capacities, but as technology improved, they became more affordable and capable of storing larger amounts of data. Today, SSDs are widely used in modern computers, especially in laptops and other portable devices, because they are faster, more reliable, and more energy efficient than traditional hard drives. They also are more durable and resistant to shock and vibration, making them ideal for use in rugged environments. Now that I gave you a brief history of memory and storage drives, my group members Thomas and Zach are going to go into more depth on how these storage devices work. All right. Hello, I'm Zach. I'm going to be talking about solid state drives. And then after that, we're going to be transitioning into removable storage. OK, so solid state drives are a newer form of storage technology that have become increasingly popular in recent years. Unlike, unlike traditional hard, hard disk drives or, or HDDs, uh, which use spinning platters to store and retrieve data, SSDs use a collection of memory chips. This means that SSDs have no moving parts, which makes them faster, more reliable, and more energy efficient than hard drives. The history of SSDs can be traced back to the early 1990s when flash memory was first developed as a viable alternative to, to traditional memory technologies. However, it wasn't until the early 2000s that SSDs began uh, to gain widespread popularity. At first, SSDs were primarily used in niche applications where high performance was a critical factor, such as military and aerospace applications. However, as the cost of flash memory continued to, to decline, SSDs began, began to become more, more widely adopted in consumer electronics products such as laptops, desktops, and tablets. So how do SSDs work? At a high level, SSDs use a collection of memory chips to store and retrieve data. These memory chips are typically organized into a grid-like structure called a NAND flash tray, which I have an image of in the bottom right. Uh, each memory cell in the array can store one or two bits of data, depending on the, on the specific technology used. When data is written to an SSD, 
it is stored in these memory cells as electrical charges. When data is read from an SSD, the, these charges in the memory cells are read and interpreted as digital data. One key advantage of SSDs over traditional hard drives is speed. Because SSDs have no moving parts, they can read and write data much faster than hard drives because um, they have to physically spin a magnetic, magnetic disk to access uh, their data. Uh, they also, uh, SSDs also consume less power than, than hard drives, which can result in longer battery life for mobile devices and laptops. Another advantage of SSDs is their reliability. Because they have no, no moving parts again, they're le they less susceptible to mechanical failure from, uh, than hard drives. They're also less prone to data loss due to physical shock or impact. Uh, to sum up solid state drives, uh, they, they represent a significant advancement in storage technology. They offer faster read and write speeds, lower power consumption, and increased reliability compared to, to traditional hard drives. As the cost of flash memory con continues to decline, SSDs are likely to become an even more common form of storage in a var variety of consumer electronics products. Uh, all right, so now we're going to talk about remo removable memory. Uh, removable memory is a key component of modern computing and electronic devices. From smartphones and tablets to di digital cameras and music players, uh, removable memory has become an essential tool for storing and sharing info. Uh, I'm going to explain the history and evolution of uh, this type of memory from the early days of floppy disks and compact disks or CDs uh, to the modern era of SD and micro SD cards. Uh, I'm gonna examine the te technical details of each type of re removable memory, as well as their applications and uh, what limitations they might have. So to start off, we have floppy disks. Uh, they were first introduced in the early 1970s by IBM, and they quickly became popular for storing and transferring data between computers. They were small, portable, and had a decent capacity for the time. Floppy disks were used for everything from software installation to data backups. In the 80s and 90s, they were the go-to storage device for most people. However, they can always really store up to 1.4 megabytes, uh, which became and became obsolete later on. So a floppy disk is a thin magnetic storage medium that is enclosed in a square or rectangular plastic shell. The disk itself uh, inside the, the hard case was flexible and bendable, and that's why they were called floppy disks. The disk is coated with a magnetic material that can be magnetized or demagnetized to, to represent binary data. To write data to a floppy disk, the computer's floppy drive uses a read, read and write head to magnetize the disk's surface in specific locations to represent binary data. Uh, to read data from the disk, the floppy drive reads, them, reads these magnetic signals and converts them into digital data uh, that can then be understood by the computer. All right, let's move on to uh, CDs or compact disks. Uh, they, they were co-developed by Philips and Sony, and they were a round, or they are a round, flat, and reflective disk that is made of polycarbonate plastic and is coated within a coated with a thin layer of aluminum. Uh, they were first introduced in the 80s and became popular in the 90s. Uh, they were really revolutionary because they offered a much larger storage capacity than floppy disks. Uh, they could store up to 700 megabytes of data, and and, and yeah, floppy disks were only 1.44. Um, yeah, to, to use a CD, you would insert it into the, the disk drive in your computer, and then you push it in. And then once it's inserted, you could access the data stored in it uh, by just opening the file or program on your, on your computer. Uh, th these, these are used for music, software, and data storage. They were also popular for distributing software in games because they, they could easily and very cheaply be mass produced. So the data on a CD is stored uh, very differently compared to other types of storage because uh, the, the data is stored in a series of pits and lands on the disk's surface. And pits are little indents in the surface, and then the lands are just everything else, which is uh, completely flat. Uh, yeah, to read this, 
uh, a laser reflects off the oh yeah so the cd drive uses a laser to scan the surface of the disk and to uh, detect these pits and lands the laser reflects off the, the aluminum layer and the light that is reflected back is analyzed to determine the location and sequence of the pits and the lands uh, these are then converted into converted into digital data that can be understood by the computer and finally we have sd cards uh, which are still widely used today uh, sd cards with sd cards which means secure digital were first introduced in the late 90s by sandisk panasonic and toshiba and quickly became popular because they were small portable and had a much larger sort of storage capacity than floppy disks and cds uh, they were used for a wide range of purposes like storing photos and videos and uh, expanding the storage of mobile devices like smartphones and uh, cameras uh, the SD card is a small, flat, or very small, flat and rectangular device that contains a flash memory chip. Flash memory is a type of non-volatile memory that can be electrically that can be electrically erased and reprogrammed. The data on an SD card is stored as electrical charges in the memory cells of the flash memory chip. To write data to an SD card, the computer or device sends electrical signals to this chip, which alter the the charges in the memory cells. And to read data from the SD card, the computer reads, reads these charges in memory cells and converts them into, into digital data that can then be understood by the computer. All right, so micro SD cards were a small variant, smaller variant of SD cards developed a few years later. And they were designed for, for, designed for use in devices with limited space, like smartphones, tablets, while other SD cards uh, measure 32 millimeters by 24, micro SD cards were much smaller as they were 15 millimeters by 11. Uh, despite their smaller size, micro SD cards use the same technology as regular, regular SD cards, uh, flash memory. This means that micro SD cards can be used in devices that, su that support regular SD cards, as long as they have an SD card slot and you have the right adapter. Uh, one key difference between them, though, is their storage capacity. Because uh, micro SD cards usually have smaller storage capacities, and it's more expensive to increase them. And another difference between them is their speed. Uh, ge generally speaking, micro SD, micro SD cards tend to be slower than regular SD cards, although, although there are exceptions. This can impact the performance of devices that use micro SD cards for storage, such as smartphones. Despite these differences, micro SD cards were a popular choice for mobile devices because they were just so small. They have become a popular form of portable storage and are found like in a, a lot of consumer electronics. And although it's more expensive for a micro SD cards to increase their storage, they can both theoretically go up to 128 terabytes, which is insane. So in conclusion, uh, or to sum up removable memory, uh, each of these storage devices has a unique internal structure and mechanism for storing and retrieving data. Because floppy disks use the magnetic materials to store data, CDs use, uses uh, a laser from the CD drive to, st uh, to read pits and lands, and SD cards use flash memory to store and retrieve data. And understanding the workings of these devices can give us a greater appreciation of the, of the technology that has shaped the evolution of data storage over time. Let's take a deeper look into primary memory, the backbone of a computer's operation. As mentioned before, primary memory, also known as main memory or primary storage, refers to the volatile memory used by the computer's processor. It stores the data and instructions necessary for running programs. Unlike secondary storage, which consists of files and applications which users could easily access themselves, primary memory enables the computer to perform t tasks efficiently and respond to user commands quickly. At the heart of primary memory lies RAM, or random access memory. RAM provides temporary storage for data and instructions that the processor requires in real time. When an application is launched, the most critical parts are initially loaded into RAM. 
As you interact with an application and perform various tasks, additional program components and data are loaded to pr produce a seamless functionality. RAM acts as a temporary workspace, allowing the processor to access and manipulate the required inf information efficiently. To understand this, we'll use the task of opening Microsoft Word as an example. Whenever you would open an application, such as Microsoft Word, only the necessary files and instructions are loaded into RAM initially. Uh, this allows for quick access and ensures smooth operation. All the other documents saved on the computer are only loaded into RAM when the user opens them themselves. These other files are saved in a storage device, which is part of a computer's secondary memory, until they're accessed by the user, in which case they're loaded into RAM. It's crucial to understand the distinction between RAM and secondary storage. While RAM holds data temporarily, the storage of files, applications, and other data is handled by secondary storage devices, like hard drives or SSDs. For example, when you save a file in Microsoft Word, it's stored in secondary storage, not RAM. Closing the file deletes it from primary memory, freeing up space in RAM for new operations to be performed. The most common types of RAM used today are DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5 SD RAM. Introduced in 2007, DDR3 RAM modules with 240 pins offer respectable performance and reasonable power consumption. They are widely used today, but newer generations have surpassed what these DDR3 RAM modules are capable of. The evolution of RAM led to the introduction of DDR4 modules in 2014. DDR4 brought significant improvements over DDR3, which included higher data transfer rates, increased capacity, and a much improved power efficiency. With 288 pins as opposed to the previous 240, DDR4 RAM operates at higher frequencies, which allows for much smoother multitasking, faster application loading, and overall better system performance than DDR3 modules allowed for. It's still one of the most popular choices in modern systems today. However, in 2019, DDR5 RAM emerged as the latest innovation. DDR5 modules represent a leap forward in performance, boasting higher data transfer rates, improved power efficiency, and larger capacity compared to their predecessors. It also has 288 pins, like DDR4, but has lower operating voltages and a much faster bandwidth speed. DDR5 meets the demands of modern applications, such as high-resolution gaming and data-intensive tasks. With its lower voltage and requirements and faster bandwidth speeds, DDR5 RAM sets a new standard for performance and efficiency. Now, how exactly does a computer get RAM? How do you connect it to your computer? Well, RAM modules come in small rectangular boards, which contain integrated circuits that store data in a digital format. The computer's motherboard plays a vital role in accommodating these RAM modules. It provides slots designed to hold these modules securely, as you can see here. Each motherboard supports specific types of RAM, ensuring compatibility and optimal performances. The notch placement on each RAM chip prevents the installation of unsupported modules. So for example, if we go to this previous slide, you can see that in each one of these, the notches don't line up to avoid any error and any uh, mistakes in connecting it to an incompatible motherboard. Uh, it's worth noting the crucial role RAM plays in overall system performance. Having an adequate amount of RAM allows your computer to handle more simultaneous tasks efficiently. Insufficient RAM can lead to very sluggish performance, frequent program crashes, and delays in task execution. Upgrading or adding more RAM modules can significantly enhance your computer's capabilities. So as the technology continues to advance, we can expect further developments in primary memory and RAM as whole uh, to, to boost computing experiences and make even more powerful computers. Uh, just, February, just in February this year, DDR6 RAM was confirmed to be in development by Samsung. So that's very exciting news. Um, understanding the importance of RAM allows for a deeper knowledge of how computers perform so many tasks in the background out of sight from the users. 
In conclusion, primary memory and RAM are essential components that enable our computers to operate smoothly and respond to our commands swiftly. RAM acts as the temporary workspace for applications and data, ensuring efficient processing. So that was our look into primary memory, which are more portable and, and easy transfer of data between multiple devices, such as floppy disks, CDs, and SD cards. These types of devices in various forms of memory hardware, whether it be primary memory or secondary memory, allow for computers today to run so seamlessly and perform thousands of operations without the user having to know.